top tech companies come together and plan to donate billions of dollars to cybersecurity. What does that mean as an investor? Why should I care? All those things we're going to discuss today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, you're now tuned in to The Prince of Investment with your host, Prince Dice, coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So the first thing we want to discuss and talk about is what is cybersecurity? So let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss what this plan was about. Why is this meeting happening? Then we're going to get into the industry of cybersecurity. We're going to take a quick break. And then after that break, we're going to get into exact companies um, that invest into, not invest into, but companies that a potential investor could look into to benefit off of what the president and what big companies say they're going to do. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to first give the disclaimer. This is not any financial advice or telling you what to buy or telling you what to do. I'm simply reporting the news and giving you an opinion, right? So what you need to do is to do your own due diligence and your own research. I'm just giving you a couple of tools for your toolbox. All right. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So Google, Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, all these companies come together, they meet with the president, they have a, a meeting at the White House to say they're going to uh, allocate billions of dollars into the cybersecurity space. Now, let's first talk about why is this meeting happening? Now, the first reason why this meeting is happening, the first reason why this meeting is happening is because we have been seeing cybersecurity attacks on the, on the rise big time in the last few years. Cybersecurity is the number one way that companies are being attacked. So you look at, we are very vulnerable to cybersecurity. Now today with phones and via the internet, we do everything. Remember when phones were just for a phone call? Now phones are doing what faxes used to do. Remember a fax machine? Hey, fax me over that document. Now you can text that document or you can text your address. Now people's social media is on there. Their banking accounts is on there. We go to school on our phone. We Our lives are on the phone. We pay our bills. We pay our insurance, everything. There's an app for that. There's an app for everything. So as this continues to dominate the world, Guess what it does? What vulnerability does it awaken? Cybersecurity. Think about it. When I go to make my appointments with my doctor, guess what? I can just pull up the app, see what my appointment is, print out the appointment, email it to somebody, all those good things, right? That's what we have to do, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to think about cyber, not cybersecurity, but cyber in itself has taken on a whole new means. It is not the future. It is here now, and it's going to continue to grow into the future. If you really tune into the show and things that I say all the time, um, I was talking about this for a while now. I may mention this years ago, uh, cybersecurity being on the rise, cybersecurity being a big thing. The more and more we do online, it increases our vulnerability. It has gotten to the point now to where you're looking at the way we drink our water is via cyber, not cybersecurity, but the internet. Internet has something to do with the way we drink our water, the way we, uh, the way planes fly, the way we drive, red lights, green lights, all those type of things, all have something to do with cybersecurity, meaning that the vulnerability is continuing to grow. Can you imagine if somebody hacked the New York Stock Exchange? Can you imagine? Can you imagine if someone hacked? your um your local city water can you imagine if someone hacked the red lights and green lights in your city what would happen if you live in a nice urbanized area if you come from where i'm from where you probably got like four stoplights it probably won't do too much but if you come from a major city or near a major city or a urban very urbanized area that could mean a lot so we haven't even got into the internet now today it is you have to have the internet because how are you going to apply for a job? How are you going to get paid? Banking is done online. Applications are done online. Everything is done through the internet. This is why we had the quote unquote Obama phones. Remember the cell phones everybody got? Welfare recipients got, but everybody was mad about it. But why did we have that happen? Because of cybersecurity is just that important. Now let's get into it. Now these companies come together. Now we get the importance of cybersecurity. Let's get to why these companies started to mention cybersecurity. The reason why Google and Microsoft wants to spend billions of dollars into cyber, because cyber, they are very vulnerable to cyber. For prime example, you look at someone like Microsoft, they provide you know, computers to the government, a lot of government computers that we use, a lot of school computers that we use, a lot of top secret computers that we use are all made by Microsoft. 
Can you imagine if somebody was able to hack into our top secret network and get that information out into our enemy's hands? The second thing, look at Google. Google is the internet. <laughs> people say, hey, you know, people don't go, you know, remember back in the day when you had to read an encyclopedia and know something, how to get, how to search around the web. Now you just go to Google. Everybody goes to Google. This, you know, let's go to Google. Google, what does Google say? That is our new research tool. It's the number one most used research tool in the world. I'm guilty of it too. So everybody uses Google. Google is the internet. Google owns YouTube. Google owns a plethora of things. So they're very vulnerable as cybersecurity. Um, as cyber continues to grow, they're very vulnerable to cybersecurity attacks. So now look at IBM. IBM, you know, they're the chip maker. Can you imagine somebody who the chips that's going inside of our vehicles, the chips that's going inside of our computers, the chips that's going inside of our watches, everything we do in our lives, our phones, where they get hacked or compromised? Can you imagine if Amazon, look at Amazon, who's pretty much the number one, not pretty much, but is the number one retailer in the world, how much do they rely upon cybersecurity? Everybody, all the way down to the small mom and pop local bakery is utilizing cybersecurity. Because how does they swipe? How do I go in and take my credit card? Not even I don't even put my credit card in machines. I just tap it. Now I can tap my, my uh, credit card and boom, it has made the charge to the transaction to take the money out of my account, put the money in their account. How does all these things happen? which opens us up to the next field of finances and insurance. Who goes in and pays their money, not pays their money, but who pays their bill with cash? Nobody. Everybody gets online, hops online and pay for it. Can you imagine if that system was to get hacked? So ladies and gentlemen, I say all that to say this, we know the importance, we know the companies that are kind of, uh, who has the vulnerabilities. Now we're going to slide into the actual companies and how they perform. Let's take a look. How has the cybersecurity industry ETF performed? Looking down at some of my notes here, 13% year to date, 13% from January to now, the hack ETF has gone up 13%. Now, the next thing you got to look at is this is a company I talked about. It was a sleeping giant. I had it for a while and I sold it and I went into the other company. You know, I give you guys a, a good reason why not to follow me on that is I had a company called Fortinet. You know, Fortinet, not Fortnite, but it was called Fortinet. Hopefully, I'm not butchering the name. But um, Fortinet was a cybersecurity company. Had amazing finances. Did that live here on the show. Went through their finances, and they had amazing finances. They were the top of the industry, made tons of money, no debt. I mean, bulletproof financial statement, right? Then I looked at another company called CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike had a bunch of momentum. Finances wasn't as good, but its momentum wasn't good. Now, Fortinet, on the other hand, Fort, Fortinet did have great finances, but not so great fundamentals. So when I look back at it, I was kind of thinking of, I was holding on to Fortinet. I was like, oh, this is a brick solid company, but it just wasn't moving. I mean, CrowdStrike just came in and just took over $100. Then it went up to $200. Then it went up to 230 something. It was just trucking and trucking and trucking. And there was Fortinet just sitting there tiptoeing and tiptoeing and tiptoeing and tiptoeing. And guess what happened? Um, you know, coming into this year, CrowdStrike is up 39% year to date. 39%, not bad. But Fortinet is now up 113% year to date. So CrowdStrike had an amazing year last year, but this year, Fortinet has taken over. So the big reason why, and you know, I would even take the ETF. I take 13%, heck, I even take 39%, all those are great, right? But the thing is, when you look at this entire industry, this entire industry is set to grow. Why? Let's take a look at some of the statistics that companies said. You had companies like Solar Wind and oil pipelines, solar wind companies and oil, oil pipelines were hacked. As we move into this world of moving away from gas and moving into electronic vehicles and clean energy, you're having big companies becoming hacked. Now you look at it. The government has came out, President Biden has came out and said, we want to create 500,000 jobs. You have um, President Biden also came out and said he wanted two-person verification authentication. What does he mean by that? You remember back in the day when you used to be able to log into your E-Trade account, just put in your username and password, and boom, you were in your account. Now you put your name, username, and password in the account. Then you get a, they say, hey, we're going to send a text message to your phone. 
and then you got to get a text message to your phone and it takes a picture of your face or whatever just to get into your account that's a two two step or two person verification authentication meaning that they want to they're taking an extra step when you do this extra step this can slow down on cyber attacks cyber security uh, not slow down cyber cyber security but up cyber security slows down on cyber attacks why is that so important this is so important because now companies who didn't have this before let's say if you were a local bank and people can just download your app put their phone number into you know put their username and password into your app and be able to see their bank account those things are now going away are not going away those things are now turning into um companies and i have to go buy infrastructure to facilitate the new ruling so what that means is new regulations new regulations when you have um two-step verification not two-step two-step authentication you have to authorize yourself to go in through the account companies are now going out to buy this so you're seeing companies like amazon facebook Google and practically every financial company is now requiring two-step verification or authentication. And the reason why this is so important is this is very important because of companies have to spend money into this world. So if a company out there provides this service, this put this put this puts them into a great position. I don't know why I'm having a hard time speaking tonight, but we're going to get through it. The other thing is take someone like me, let's say if uh, let's say, hey, Prince Dyke's owner, he's a registered investment advisory out in Denver, Colorado, well, hypothetically speaking. And then all of a sudden, the government comes out and says, hey, we're looking for registered investment advisories, and we're going to donate 100, 500, $500 billion to these type of companies to hold assets and do whatever, right? Now, doesn't mean I'm going to get the money. But it means that I'm in the position to capitalize off of making the money. Now, what does that mean as an investor? You can now see when the government starts to put out grants and they start to put out money and when big companies start to put out money, who are going to be the people that are going to benefit from it? Who are these cybersecurity companies? How can I invest into them? How can I make money from them? And this is how you do it by looking at companies that are in position that offer government contracts, things like that. How can you make money from those transactions? All right. So what we're going to do here. We're going to take a quick break. I mean, a very quick break. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back more on companies that you can invest in, um, cybersecurity companies, and seeing how this industry is taking over by using what President Biden said. So we'll be right back. Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Google and Microsoft putting billions of dollars into cyber. Now, we, early in the episode, we talked about the importance of cybersecurity, and we also talked about companies that were being hacked by cybersecurity, and you know, jobs being created, all those other good things. Now, the thing I look about with the thing I look at with jobs, I always look at jobs because jobs are very important. Why? That is the number one way to tell if a company is growing and expanding is with human capital. When a company starts to hire people, they're hiring people because what they want to do. They want to hire people in order to expand their company. 
So when a company starts to hire people or industry starts to hire people, that's when a little bell goes off in my head to say, hey, you know what? What's going on in this particular industry? Because the first way to expand, not always, but a lot of companies, the first thing they do when they start to expand is, hey, they may get a new secretary, whatever the case may be. They may put some more money to research and development or whatever. But so when I like to look at what companies are doing when they're hiring. So the reason why I brought this up, let's look up the Bureau of Labor Statistics data. The Bureau of Labor Statistics data is the bureau that pretty much tracks labor statistics, which is kind of self-explanatory if you look at the name of it. But what it does is it, it makes projections on jobs in the next 10 years, in the next decade. What would be the next hottest industry? What would be the hottest industry, right? Cybersecurity is one of them. So when I see this industry continues continue, continuing to grow and by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it makes me wonder, okay, well, if this industry industry is continuing to grow, what else is it, what else, um, what else is there to do as an investor? So when a company starts to expand, they start to hire people like crazy. As they start to hire people, if it's done properly, the more people that they have means the more profits that they're going to make. And if done right, if money is managed properly, we all know it's not about the top line of what you're making. It's all about that bottom line about what you're keeping, which goes on into our retained earnings on our income statement, right? So now, as I can see, income statements net earnings starting to grow and swell when you see so much money starting to grow and swell and retain earnings what's next the company is going to look to expand it may be research and development maybe open up a new store maybe buying out other companies maybe uh buying out other companies doing all type of things buying back their own stocks buying up you know all type of things to add value to a company when a company is making crazy retained earnings and the retained earnings are growing year over year very hard to do by the way but the companies that can do that are doing that now when you look at the the one thing i like about um um the cybersecurity industry is that there's not a lot of heavy weight when it comes down to finances Prince, what do you mean by heavy weight so for prime example, it was something I read in a book. It was um, a financial book about financial statements. And it said, hey, for prime example, let's say Ford. Every time Ford wants to make a new car, Ford has to remodel its entire factory. Meaning, hey, you know, we decide instead of doing the Ford F-150, we want to do the Ford F-250. If they decide to do the, F, the Ford F-250, guess what they got to do? The new 250, it has to have this type of chip in it, it has to have this, all these type of inside the plant, right? Versus cybersecurity. Cybersecurity doesn't require a lot of heavy weight, meaning certain industries, they require you to have a building. Let's say if you were Sears, right? Sears has these big gigantic, let's, you know, let's go to the movie theaters. That's been a hot topic later with all the short squeezes. So you take something like a movie theater, it has to have all these big cathedrals. <laughs> I'm calling them a cathedral, hypothetically speaking. But all these big theaters, they got to have all these big rooms that require lights, water, gas. You got to have employees. You need popcorn. You need soda, juice machine, janitors. Somebody got to deliver the popcorn. Somebody got to show the movie. The movie got old speakers. That's a heavy lifting. Versus in cybersecurity, it's a group of guys in a room, guys and girls in a room with some servers with access to a computer, and that's it. They type up incident reports, tell what happened, tell what how many times you almost got intruded upon, how many times they stopped something, all those type of things. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm glad, you know, if you listen to this deep in the show, something I always tell people, people always love to say, Bitcoin has value because it's decentralized. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Big Bitcoin is decentralized and it's unhackable. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, y'all tune in and listen to me very closely. Anything that a man creates, another man can break. Just because they can't break it today, or they might not be able to break it tomorrow, doesn't mean they'll never be able to break it. But eventually, if the man tries hard enough, he will eventually break it. All right. So what I mean by this is, is codes. When people write codes and it's a code we've never seen before and everybody's like, oh, my God, we'll never break that code. It's an unbreakable code. It always get broken. Someone may take 
two years, five years, 20 years, even 30 years. But if one man has coded something, another man can break it. That's why you think we have so much cybersecurity. So when you look at something like cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, people say, oh, that's unhackable because it's on the blockchain and the blockchain is on this chain and nobody controls it. It's decentralized. I'm like, well, that sounds good. But as blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies get older and become more valuable, you're going to see more people hack into it. I bet your bottom dollar right now, there's someone right now somewhere trying to hack Bitcoin. Just like somebody right now is trying to hack the Federal Reserve. And eventually they will win. See, with the Federal Reserve, they probably already have a cybersecurity team that every day is going in, getting, you know, getting people out of their system, seeing who's on the system, coming up with incident reports. They're making new systems. So one person learns how to intrude enough, then they make a new system to stop that. A person learns a new code, they make a code to stop that. So it's this cat and mouse game that's going on in the cyber world that you don't know about because guess what? If Russia decided to hack our system, why would we go out and tell everybody, right? We heard those stories. So now when you look into the world of um, Bitcoin, you'll be crazy to believe that this that Bitcoin will be unhackable forever for perpetuity. That's, that would be... A man made it. Yeah, it probably was a good program, but guess what? The technology that we're going to see in 10 years is going to blow our socks off. For prime example, you're talking about 30 years ago, you're talking about um, you couldn't, we had cores on our phones. We was walking around with cores on our phone. We had house phone. Now today, that's laughable. 20, 30 years ago, we used to get in our car and drive to a place and rent movies. That's laughable. Heck, 20, 30 years ago, we used to drive and sit in a place and watch movies. Now, today, that's becoming more and more laughable. Why is that technology? And we have evolved. Remember your car? Some people probably still got in the car. You put your key in the car and turn the key in your car and drive off. Nowadays, that's almost laughable. Those are going away. Everybody's pushing the button to start nowadays. So just think about how we're evolving. Something that we thought was so cool 20 years ago is not so cool today. And somebody had given you a, a coupon that said one free movie runner from Blockbuster 30 years ago, man, that was an amazing deal. Now in 2021, you would laugh at, laugh at them. So the technology that we're seeing today in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, now I'm not a, you know, I hear claiming to be the best in the world and knowing all of the cyber stuff, but I do know this, anything that one man creates, another man can break if they try hard enough and depending on how bad they want to break it. All right. Well, we're going to do a quick recap before I get out of here. Uh, we talked about the first thing was all these major companies were getting hacked. We saw the solar wind companies and we saw the oil pipeline get hacked by hackers. So guess what? This prompted the president to throw in a big, um, throw in a, a big meeting from everybody from tech to insurance and say, hey guys, how are we gonna protect ourselves? We are here getting hacked. We can't have the oil lines getting hacked and the water lines getting hacked because a lot of civilian and private companies run those. So it came out, it came out that they, they're, they're looking to create hundreds of thousands of jobs in cybersecurity. They're looking, President Biden signed in the law the two point verification, meaning you, you log onto your 401k plan, you get a verification that comes to your phone. Google plans to spend $10 billion over the next five years and train 100,000 workers. Microsoft, IBM, Amazon was all at this big meeting, and cybersecurity is becoming more and more important. You look at the ETF hack, H-A-C-K, it is up so far around about 13% this year with CrowdStrike at 39 and Fortinet at 113. CrowdStrike is the one that has had the momentum last year, strong momentum, but it didn't have the finances. Fort, Fortinet's finances is astronomical, right? Great, amazing, um, you know, amazing finances. The only downside was they didn't, they didn't have that momentum. The stock wasn't moving. CrowdStrike just came in and just shot up to the moon, right? But now Fortinet is taking its jets off, and so far this year has doubled your money if you'd have had it in there. I wish I'd have kept some of it in there. But I'm not a mad, I'm not a I'm not mad at it because I make money off of it and cybersecurity is still here to stay. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude today's episode. My name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. And to the next video, podcast, book, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, 
Peace, be safe. I'm out and thank you.